So here we're going to set up the Marlin firmware using Visual Micro and we'll also show you some of the steps you'd need to do to configure a programmer to burn the bootloader. So here we have the Marlin download page at marlinfw.org and you can download a zip file of the latest firmware. So we've downloaded that and extracted that onto our PC and then in the Marlin folder we can see the Arduino project where the INO file is. So if we just open Visual Studio and then go File, Open and select Arduino project. Then we open the INO file from the folder we extracted and this will then load into Visual Micro. Now it will scan the whole solution and bring in all of the header and source files. This will take a few minutes. However, it will only happen the first time you bring the project in. So now that's been imported and just finishing. And it'll open the INO when it's completed. So there we go. So if we press the save all at the top, that would save a solution file, which will have all of this cached for the future. So the next time you open it, it'll take a couple of seconds. So here's some links in the Marlin INO. There's no actual code. And all of these are worth reviewing before you venture into the world of either building your own 3D printer or reflashing an existing one. So with Marlin, the main configuration is completed in one of the header files. So if we go down to configuration.h, this is the standard configuration file. And this is extremely well commented and well laid out. So you'll have to alter the definitions within this file to suit your particular board, printer, motors, extruders, bed, and so on. And there's further documentation on the Marlin website, as well as all of the documentation that's been written into this configuration file. So here on the Marlin website, and there'll be links in the description, we can see it beginning to describe how this works and as you go down the page it will expand more sections which will take you through explanations of what you see in the configuration.h. So it's definitely worth a read and if you do know of someone who's already flashed a similar printer to yours it may be worth looking at that. So to upload the firmware to your printer you'll just need to select the right board Mine's based on a AC Mega 2560. So select the board, select your COM port, and then you can build if you just wish to build it or build and upload. In this case, I'm just going to build as I will connect it and upload the firmware later. So that'll take a few minutes because of the size of the project. And then you'll see at the end that that's completed. It's also worth reviewing our video about how to speed up large projects as this will speed up the build time for this project. So here's my board on my printer. This is a CTC Prusa i3 clone. So the LCD connects there and then the SD card connects in the other port. Now this is only applicable if you need to flash a bootloader onto your device. So for this particular printer, the SD card slot can be reused to access the ICSP header. And as we can see on the right, we've got the pins that that will connect to on a standard Arduino Uno being used as an ISP. So to get your ISP, you would need, in this case, an Arduino Uno or any other Arduino board supported. And First, of course, if you're going to reflash an existing printer, do check you've got Marlin firmware on it. So here we've connected with our board rate, 250,000, and we've sent it the M115 command once it's started up. As we can see here, it's definitely running a copy of the Marlin firmware. It's just a lot older as it's under the Ericsson repository. You can also see a number of settings which are definitely worth recording if you don't actually have a copy of your firmware. Um, as you'll need these when configuring Marlin and when setting up your printer again after the upgrade. There's more information in the links below and we do have an overview page that'll take you through these steps and all the wiring diagrams shown in this video on our website.